والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الحمد لله and welcome to this episode of the beauties of islam I'm Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes, I want to talk more about the subject of this beautiful thing called the way, the way to Almighty God, Deen Allah. In previous programs, we've discussed in some details about this word Deen and how it means the way. We even mentioned that in the Bible, we found the exact translation of this still existing in some of the English translations. When it says that Paul who used to persecute and kill the Christians, he said he used to persecute the people of the way, even unto death. He didn't call them Christians, and he didn't call himself a Christian either. As a matter of fact, according to the New Testament we have today, it says they were never ever called Christians until they had start, uh, started to go into Antioch. And this was well after the death of Jesus, peace be upon him, according to them. I say according to them because as Muslims, you see, we believe in Jesus as a miracle birth. We believe in him as the word of God. We believe in him as the Messiah, the uh, chosen, the appointed, the anointed. And we believe in him even as someone with God and coming back in the last days. But we don't believe he's God. And we don't believe he's the son of a God. And we don't believe that Jesus is going to really be an intercessor for us because this is not the way that we have today with this word deen. And it's not the way that it was understood at that time. According to the ancient manuscripts, especially those found at Wadi Qumran, often referred to as the Dead Sea Scrolls, we find that there was someone called the Great Teacher. Was it Jesus? That's a good question. He was also called the Rabbi. Rabbi means teacher. But what we find is that the lessons that are being taught are always the same. Don't have any other gods beside God. The first commandment, we find it in the book of Exodus, even today. In the book of Deuteronomy, we find the Ten Commandments again. First number one commandment, no partners with God. We find it in the book of Hosea. We find it in, throughout. You want to look through the Bible, Old Testament, you find it. No gods beside God. But what about the New Testament? And again, you do find this same teaching. We mentioned in Mark 12, 29, here's a teaching, very clear. To know, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. And you can't make, I don't know, how, how are you going to get Trinity out of that? I don't know. <laughs> but for sure, for sure, if somebody said Jesus is somebody very special to Allah, we say, alayhi salam, after his name. Peace be upon him. And we would never accept that someone would insult or put him down or even use him in a joke. This is how serious the Muslims feel about our Jesus. Peace be upon him. At the same time, we recognize he is also the Kalamata law, which means he is the word of God. God speaks the word. The word becomes flesh. Well, if you said, well, that's in the Bible, well, that's in Islam too. In fact, we know nothing happens except it's by the will of Allah. And when Allah wills anything to be done, he merely says, kun, fayakun, be, and it is. Whatever he orders to happen will always happen. This is how it is. So, if you said, well, Jesus is a product of something Allah created, we agree. If you said uh, that he spoke the word and the word became flesh and, the, and it was Jesus, no problem with that. But if you tried to say that God came inside of Jesus, then we'd have a problem with that. A big problem with that. First of all, it doesn't fit in simple common sense. It also doesn't fit in the teachings of Islam. Of course, we're Muslims. And it really is not something you can prove clearly from any of what exists of translations of the Bible today. At the same time, I want to caution the Muslims to be careful. Don't go about 
just simply trying to debate with the Christians about the Bible with the attitude that you can prove to them the Bible is not from a law. If you do this, you're doing two mistakes. One mistake is that there may be actually something that you're quoting or misquoting that really was from a law. Because remember, we believe in the original book that their books are based on. The original was from a law. So you want to be careful about that. The second point, and I think it's as relevant as the first point, that by arguing with people and turning them away from the Bible completely and proving that there's no way this could be from God, you might cause them to wind up being like a lot of the scholars of the Bible. They become atheists. Once someone decides to become a real scholar of the Bible and really study, for instance, you might uh, know somebody uh, who has been to Princeton University or know somebody who, uh, about somebody who's been there, and they study this subject of the manuscripts, they wind up giving up because they find out that what they've been taught in Sunday school, what was mentioned from their pulpit, doesn't hold up at all. In fact, in some cases, it's more than just exaggeration. It's more than imagination. It's outright prevarication, meaning they're lying to you. Because there is nothing existing today that is actually from the Bible itself. That's a big statement. I know you want to hear the rest of this one. So what I'm going to do is give you a chance to think about this. And when I come back, I'm going to prove what I said to you. So I know you don't want to move. Stay right there. Watch this. We'll be right back with more of the beauties of Islam. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman. خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا. Learning how to recite the Quran properly. Learning the meaning of what we recite. Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite. Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life. We we'll listen to the participants and the guests. We'll take your phone calls. We're going to recite life. We'll listen to your recitation. And we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations which we'll state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. Will come true. In Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. We're back and you're watching the beauties of Islam. I'm Yusuf Estes, and we've been talking about the subject of the Bible as it exists today. You might say, well, how does this fit in the beauties of Islam? Well, keep in mind, in some of our other programs, we've already mentioned that we believe totally in all of the scriptures that have been revealed by Allah over the many centuries. We believe in the original of anything that came from him, and any of the scrolls, and any of the, like the Torah, for instance, anything that came in the Zabur or the Psalms of David and Suleiman. And certainly we believe in the Injil, the original book, that it came to Jesus. However, when somebody starts to bring his translations, we don't accept that as being from God. We've mentioned that too. The Quran, for instance, in the Arabic language is the Quran. That is what it's all about. There it is right there. Okay? We'll say, yeah, that that's the Quran. But at the same time, if you brought me something that says Quran in English letters, and I open it up and it's written in English, uh, that's not the Quran. That's a translation of meaning according to somebody. Not acceptable to us. So I want to come back now to my subject when I said I could prove that we do not have anything that came from Jesus, peace be upon him. We don't have a single scrap or a piece of paper or a parchment or anything at all that was inscribed by Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And you might say, wait a minute, that's not what you said. You said you, that you could prove that the Bible isn't from Jesus. All right, here's what I want you to do. 
take the time to look this up on our website. We have a website, and as I already told you, it's called beautiesofislam.com. When you go to the website, you can look and see for yourself. We'll be talking about one of the scholars of the Bible who used to believe what he was taught in Sunday school, just like I used to believe it. He also had been to the church, just like I had. He also had been preaching, just like I did. And all of a sudden, when he got really serious about studying, just like I did, he began to realize we don't really have the original Bible anymore, just like I did. But I did something that he didn't do. I kept praying to God, asking him to guide me, to guide me, to guide me. And then I was willing to listen and watch and accept whatever came of that guidance. I didn't know it was going to guide me to become a Muslim. In fact, that's another story. I would have never believed that. Well, that is what happened. In his case, the person I'm talking about, he became an atheist. I know that to be a fact because I emailed him and talked to him about it. And he said he wasn't interested in discussing religion anymore because he doesn't believe in anything. And that's my point to the Muslims. Don't try to drive people away from God. Help them to see a better way to look at the subject of the way to get to God. Listen to what I'm saying. Help them to see the better way to get to God. And that is the only way, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, <clears throat> The person I'm talking to you about that wrote these books that claim what I just told you, his name is Bart Aaron, and he's written Lost Christianities, Lost Scriptures, and Misquoting Jesus, and he is a professor at the Chapel Hill University in North Carolina. He is an expert in his field. And he has studied with other experts in the field, and all of them make the same claims that he makes. These are the experts of the New Testament and the Old Testament. You can check his references for yourself. But I just want to quote him on this one subject because it, it impressed me. Amazing, the way he said it. I'm going to hold my hand up so you can see this. Look at my fingers. Because this is how he said it on the book jacket of the cover of his books. You can find this statement. He said, we do not have a copy of 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 anything from the original manuscript which came with Jesus. For him, that was enough, I guess, to believe that the wasn't anything original therefore it didn't matter he just gave up for me I can't accept it like that I believe there really is a God now did people play with the text did they change things we know English isn't the language of Jesus peace be upon him but for sure I, I have no doubt there is God and if he wants me to find the way he will guide me and if he wants me to find this deen, as we said, in Arabic language, then it's up to him to do it, because I can't do that. I can't guide myself. Nobody can guide themselves. But there's something I can do. I can ask him. And if I go back and study what remains of the Old Testament, and the New Testament, I find that even these prophets were doing this. They were calling upon God. They were asking him. And they were praying to him as the one God, the one God of Abraham, the one God of Israel, the one God of Moses, the one God of David, Suleiman, the one God of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the one God of Muhammad. And each and every one of them called on him like this, O oh God, guide me. And that is the way to be guided by him. And we say, Edina, Suratul Mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. Amen. Until next time, remember to check our website, beautiesofislam.com. Islam is peace, Islam is ease, Islam is not danger or disease.